Thanks for tuning in to On Top and Hot. I'm the host here, John Zadar, and this is Tuesday, June 21st. What I do here is I like to discuss penny stocks with you. I'm a day trader, so I see a lot of stuff through the day, and I just like to share it with you at the end of the day. Now, today is Tuesday. Monday was a holiday. That was Juneteenth. That's the name of the holiday, Juneteenth. It's a new holiday. Look it up. Tuesday had a lot of action, though. There was a lot going on today, a lot of stocks to consider. So I've got a few here that all had news. One of them has definitely been on the investor's radar before. The other two, I'm not quite sure what's going to go on with them, but they had a lot of strong activity today. Let me show you what I found. As is my habit, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. I'll be honest, folks, it doesn't matter if it's OTC, NASDAQ, or New York Stock Exchange. This is initially where I start all of my due diligence. And if I can't find what I'm looking for here, then I'll go to Google and sort through all those decades of old information, trying to find that current piece of information. Otherwise, this just saves me a lot of frustration and time because it's updated every single day by FINRA and SEC. Right? So how did the OTC finish today? Very good. Folks, it's good news. It looks like we may, I'm not saying we are, but it looks like we may have hit the bottom on the OTC volume share. We may be bouncing off of that right now. We did 11.4 billion shares today. Last Friday, we did 10 billion. And the Friday before, barely 5 billion shares. Now, folks, since February of 2021, our share volume on the OTC has been falling steadily. There has been no bouncing back or climbing for a few days and definitely not for a few weeks. So this is the first time we have seen the share volume on the OTC market climbing over the last two weeks. Something has changed. Hopefully, we do have a trend change going on right now because volume is what we need. Dollar volume is pretty much the same and our trade volume is the same, but the share volume is climbing. Woohoo! All right, let's take a look at that first stock I got. This is ticker CEAD SIA Industries. And if you're in the cannabis arena, you invest into cannabis, you probably know them better as Cerna Inc. Now, this company is on the NASDAQ, but they are a penny stock. They are under $5. They finished today at $1.41 with just over 38% gains, but they were tearing it up this morning, as you're going to see on the charts. So what this company does is they outfit greenhouses, indoor growing facilities with anything and everything they need. As far as I can see, they do electrical, they do the plumbing, mechanical, engineering, lighting. They just do it all. And they had news today that came out and darn if it didn't get people excited. Share volume today was impressive. She jumped from 300,000 shares a day to over 74 million shares. That is over 210 times her normal volume. That is excellent. You know what else is excellent? That right there. We have a very low float, folks. This is 7.7 .7 million. You can go to the unrestricted shares. That's normally going to be your float. This is outstanding. Fantastic. Probably helped it run this morning and will help it run again. Financials, they making any money? Why, sure they are. Now, we got to take three zeros here, throw those behind here. So that is $13.6 million. And they were doing eight the year before, 15, then nine. Kind of playing leapfrog here with the numbers. And it cost them 10.7 to make that. So they got to keep almost $3 million. But they are making money. Disclosures, anything recent over here? Uh, no, not for six days. This is a uh, Form 4. Form 4 is when an insider buys shares of common stock for their own company. And we see here a CEO, president, bought, because it's green, 9,090 shares at $1.10 a piece. And A means he acquired. So $10,000 worth. He just bought $10,000 worth of his own stock off of the common market. That's about it over here, so let's go jump on over to the news. All right. Well, that's a little interesting. I <laughs> see the news here doesn't go any further than February of this year. That's when they uplisted to the NASDAQ. And there we go. I knew there was new news here. Uh, right here, 621, this came out today. Cerna Cultivation Technology secures letter of intent from Green Brothers Farm for potential 10 million in revenues. Let's jump into that. So this did just come out today. 
CEA Industries has entered into a letter of intent to provide products and mechanical engineering services over five phases with Green Brothers Farm Incorporated. A family owned and operated farm that is developing a 26 acre site exclusively for indoor cannabis cultivation. Ooh, that's big. CEA Industries anticipates contract revenues of approximately 10 million over an estimated two to three year period. The initial contract, valued at 1.2 million, is for the first phase of the products and services and is planned to be completed by early Q4 2022. And that's the news, folks. That's what they do. That's the catalyst. And that is what has got it running. And that, 38%, I've got to believe from what I saw, that's less than 50% of what she threw on the table. Let's go take a look at that. We're going to be doing our charting over here at Think or Swim, better known as TOS. It's a free trading platform. So if you want to back up or don't have one at all, just run on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free account, keep your account open, it's all you got to do, and you can use this just like I am. So we are looking at CEAD, CEA Industries, also known as Cerna Inc. This is a six month, four hour chart. Very unique chart at that. Now before you get too excited about this huge bar jump there, because it is one bar, see that? one bar from four cents to three dollars and ninety cents that's a reverse split yeah and she fell about fifty percent there was some excitement and then people realized a lot of people realized that they had lost most of their shares and it fell came down here bounced off the 50 50 gave it a little hope and then it crushed through the 50 it's back up all the way 50 held it for a little while, but when it gave up the ghost, it didn't care about any SMA. It went through the 50, smashed through the 200 without even thinking about it, and has come all the way down here until today's news. You can see she was doing absolutely nothing. Sleepy man's path. And then today she rocketed. Look at that volume. We got nothing to look at here. Technicals were very strong first half of the day. Second half, not so good. 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so the price was coming up as the 200 was coming down. That makes for a quick meet. Started a little bouncing here, joggling through it, and got on top today. You can tell she was really trying to get up there, but needed a catalyst. Today was definitely everything she needed. Again, no volume. You can't see anything here, and today she ripped. She took off from, uh, well, let's look at yesterday's close, $1.11 to two dollars and 49 cents so you're looking at about a hundred and thirty three percent something like that and then she fell all the way down here to a dollar thirty oh my goodness technicals well as you would expect with that huge fall in the back part of the day everything is falling right now and doesn't even look like it's going to change let's take a look at that five day five minute as we said she was just sleeping here not doing a lot slowly getting on the top but no real excitement to talk about all that volume came in in the early part of the day really kicked it up and when did she hit her high here the high was hit at five minutes after 10 folks that's what I say all the time if you watch my videos I tell you when you see a stock surging from the bell just kick in daylights you know lightning get out at 10 10 05 absolute latest I mean, it's not going to happen 100% of the time, but in most cases, the market takes a hesitation, a little dip, but that dip can quickly and easily turn into a full bloody fall. And that's what happened here. A little bit of a dip, dee 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 dee, and then a full bloody fall all the way down. So I like to take my gains up to 10 in the morning, and if it's really kicking, it starts getting up near 80, 90%, and it's flying. A lot of times I will sell on the upsurge without even knowing how high it's going to go. Yeah, I could leave a lot on the table. But when it's flying up like this and I decide right here I'm going to start to put in my order, by the time my order finishes, it may be up here, right? So I'm getting more than I bargained for when I'm selling. And I'm happy because I took that money off the table. Now maybe there's that much left over, but if I'd have waited to hit that ceiling, and then I saw it bounce here, and I'm waiting to see if it's going to continue on. And then, boom, I start to put in my buy again, right? I'm down here, but now by the time I get my order in, I'm down here. And I've lost all my gains. Trying to find that silly ceiling. Forget about the ceiling. When you see gains 
accumulating on the table and you get a little bit nervous about it, that's a very good sign that you should probably take it. Don't get greedy. Just get used to taking money every time there's some on the table. You don't have to empty the bank. Just take some. Fill your pockets. It'll keep you going. I guarantee it. So we had that huge fall. Let me get rid of all these lines. We had that huge fall here. Came all the way down way below the 50% mark. I like to draw lines at the bottom of where the surge begins and the top where it ends and then find the center. Now you can do it mathematically or you can eyeball it. I want it to keep above that line. I want it to keep 50% of the gains. I'm willing to settle for losing 50% if it will stay up here like it did right there. It came underneath like a rubber ball. It fell, went under the water, then came up, bloop, 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 and just sits on the top. That's what happens quite often. Right up under the 50, up on the top, bloop, 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 and it wobbles up here. But then it just fell. And it fell, what do I always say? If it goes underneath this line, it'll fall to the next strongest SMA. Well, this didn't just fall to the SMA. It barreled right through that thing. Even after market hours, it continued falling. And we have one spike, one little bit of it trying to churn up. However, in saying that, Right there is our technical where we have a crossover starting to come up. We are coming out of the basement. It's under the 30, folks, which is horrible. This is under the basement floor, in the dirt. It has just now come through the basement floor, and this is just coming out of the grave itself. But everything looks like it's turning. Now, I want to show you something in case my chart doesn't look like your chart. Isn't that nice? It's all nice and even. You can see shapes, patterns, everything solid. That's because I have a special bar that I am using. I'm using the Heiken Ashi. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong, but it's right there. Heiken Ashi bar. Your regular candles look like that. That's what your regular candles look like, and there's nothing wrong with them. You learn to read candles. There's a lot of information in those candles that you can put to use. However, when you have these ups and downs, ups and downs, green, red, green, red, it's very difficult to tell where this wants to go. That's when I rely on my SMAs. However, if you do use the Heiken Ashi, the colors stay the same when it's going that direction. Red for down, green for up. So you don't worry about it changing colors in the middle of a downtrend. A little green right there in the middle giving you false hope. So. And the other thing is, normally the bars get smaller at the end when it's about to change color. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to change its trend, but you do get a change of color. But because it's thin, doesn't mean that it's going to take off, right? So, that's why if my chart looks a little different than yours, it's because I use the Heiken Ashi. I like to see the uh, trend in an easier pattern. And when you do back out, you can see patterns better. They stand off if you're looking for pennants or triangles or channels. You can see them better because there's no bald spots in there, no dashes, lots of solid color. So, oh, we just had another one. <laughs> another. So it is getting some aftermarket activity, folks. Remember, we just <laughs> looked at this. It was only touching. It has crossed over. This is now approaching the neutral point, and the RSI still isn't showing a whole lot of gain, but it does show activity aftermarket. Um, and it is starting to come up. So I don't know where this is going to actually go. The chart looks like it would probably maybe get back up here. First, it's got to get on top of the 200. That is our first mission. It's got to get up on the 200. Looks like the 10, if it can get on top of the 10, it'll probably get on top of the 200. From that point, we're going to have to see what sort of volume it gets. That's going to be all the difference in the world. All right, let's go take a look at that next stock I got. Next company we're taking a look at is Eco Innovation Group. This is ticker ECOX. Finished the day at a real great price of 0017, almost 89% gains. They're on the pink tier. They're current. They've got those precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. Verified profile and a transfer agent. Now with the pink, these are especially important to see. The problem with pinks from the get-go is that they don't have a lot of information. So the more we get, the better. And that's what these two green ticks represent, information that's been verified and validated by the OTC markets behind the scenes. Now, I don't know exactly what the information is, but I do know it's important. So when I see this all come up green on a pink, I'm quite happy about that. 
So Eco Innovation Group, they are an incubator company, which means they go out and they look for little companies or just great ideas, new innovation, and they bring it under their wing. And they help to get that new idea, that new innovation onto the open market for sale. But they also help the new company to grow in size to the point to where they can spin it out, launch it as its own company onto the major markets. And if you own this company stock, you get free shares, they're called dividends, in that new company. Now right now, this company has two products that they are working on. They have the Get and Pool Cool. The Get is the patent pending supercritical glycerin extraction technology which uses non-CO2 selected cofactors for extraction. Now extraction is a big deal. You can get a lot of things out of plants using extraction, but it's primarily been used in the cannabis arena lately. And that is where they've been using their product for the most part. This other product they have is called Pool Cooled. It's almost a tongue twister. And this is a simple one. All they do is use your pool water to cool your home. Simple, right? And what they're doing to actually move their products are other peripheral businesses. They tell us here back in October and August of last year, ECOC signs binding agreements to open engineering and construction firm to drive Canadian pool cooled commercial launch. Eco Innovation Group signs term sheet to open Canadian construction company. So they are doing more things to help their products get out there, which is always great. I like to see a strong working company. Now there was news today and it did create some volume. Normally they're doing just over 18 million shares. Today they did over 337 million. There's a lot of attention being given to this stock right now. Share structure, her float, looking at the unrestricted shares. Well, it's not a low float, 322 million. We're not gonna cry about it. Billion shares we're gonna cry about. But seriously, we can make all kinds of money with that float, so don't worry about it, folks. Looks good. Financials, they making any money? Not much. COVID seemed to put a dead stop to whatever it was they were doing. That's just a presumption. And last year, for the full year, they did $95,000 and only got to keep 43,000 of it. So they're barely in business, right? Disclosures, we got anything recent over here? We know their financials are current because they're current. And down here, we look for 8Ks and we do. We got one today, which makes sense. This is gonna go along with the news press. So we'll just look at it from that end. Jump over here to the news. Okay, that's from May of this year. And there we go. They had to actually go get this from PR Newswire. This wasn't brought into the OTC market as a press release. It was put out as news and brought in. Thank goodness. Eco Innovation gains access to new 10 million line of credit to power current and strategic objectives. This is the news that came out today. The company announces that they have been granted a line of credit of up to 10 million to be used toward retiring outstanding toxic convertible financing notes. That's always good. You want to get rid of toxic debt that cost you more money than it was worth. They're also going to be able to use the money for investing in commercializing of their prototypes related to existing projects that we just looked at and discovering new core innovation opportunities for their new technology development pipeline. They go on to tell us that the company has acquired access to up to $10 million in new capital at better terms than its current financing arrangements, allowing management greater opportunity and flexibility in meeting its current goals without subjecting its shareholders to greater dilution risk. We always like that. In addition, the new funding round will allow the company to push its current projects toward commercialization, including its revolutionary new patented advanced GET system, a next generation glycerin glycerin based supercritical plant extraction technology system which has just entered phase two of its prototype build process. In addition, new access to capital will allow the company to take advantage of new opportunities for pipeline investments as it seeks to broaden its exposure to potentially game-changing new innovations. So they're working to get their products out there. They're working to get the extraction system out there. They're working to get their pool cooled out there. You try saying pool cooled. All right, I did it. Of course I did. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is the six month, four hour chart for ECOX. 
We have a high back here of about 3.4 cents and a low bubble here of triple zero eight two days ago. Definitely under the 200 the entire six months, although she's got some very peculiar surges here. She really reaches to that 200 day SMA over and over. I see the volume was nothing here. Scantly started to appear, We're starting to get some bigger bounces, and then right now we are starting to get some strong volume. She hit that low and bounced off of it with news today. Technicals look pretty warm. Not going to call them hot, though. 20-day, one-hour view. Under the 200, she fell here over 20 days ago, bounced her head, and then fell all the way down the hill like Jack and Jill until she hit that low of triple zero eight. Rebounded off of it and then fell the rest of the day almost to that same spot. Thank God the news came out today. She shot up fast. Got all the way up there to double zero two nine after closing yesterday at triple zero nine. So you're looking at uh, 300% gains there. Absolutely, 300% gains. And she fell all the way back down here to 88%. Technicals have all fallen off in the back half of the day. Let's see what that looks like. Five day, five minute. So she took off right from the bell all the way till 10 to 11. Hit that high. Kept going for a little while and then started to fall like the last one. The last one we looked at fell all the way down bounced off the 50, rolled the 50 up, just like the last one, right? And then crushed the 50, giving no respect to it. And this time, it stopped on the 200, which has just now appeared, which is very curious because when SMAs appear, for some reason, in many cases, the price just flocks to it, like birds to a new wire. And it just landed right there. It's bounced off it twice, but it's holding itself. Technicals are getting weaker. Everything is falling right now. Volume has been declining through the day. So it looks like it wants to continue to fall, folks. And I don't know how far 10 million is going to take them uh, with the debt, uh, prototyping. But there was a lot of excitement today. And that's what you see. All it takes is news for some of these stocks to run. And when you find stocks that run on news, you should put them in a watch list. Because when the next piece of news comes out, you could catch a bang off of them. You don't have to stay in these stocks. Just get in, ride it up, and take your money. Now, if I'd have been using my... 10 10 05 rule i'd have been out probably a little early on this one wouldn't i but you know what i'd have still had money in my pocket you don't lose with that strategy that's why i like it taking money before the run runs out isn't bad <laughs> okay let's go take a look at that last stock we're now taking a look at a stock that tried to trick me. This is ticker UAVS, Ag Eagle Aerial Systems. This stock has been blazing hot before and was on a lot of investors' radar. She's not on the OTC, though. She's on the New York Stock Exchange. At least, that's they tell us here. When you search for this page, over here they tell you that she's on the American Exchange. And I had to go out and find the float because it's not listed here. And when I was searching for the float, lots of places had it listed as on the NASDAQ. And it's like, well, what bloody market is it on? Not that it really matters. You can trade it and it isn't going to make any difference really. However, I wanted to know, so I came over here to the most recent financial filing right there. It's on the New York Stock Exchange. Now, this is a drone company. She finished the day at 77 cents with 33% gains. That's how she finished. She was much higher earlier today. She did have a hard tumble. However, as I said, this stock has been hot before. But something to consider with this company, that price, 77 cents. It's in the danger zone, folks. On the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ, they have minimal price requirements. Your price cannot go under a dollar and stay there for any length of time. If you're down there too long, they give you an ultimatum. Get your price up over a dollar and keep it there over a dollar for 10 days. It has to close over a dollar for 10 days where they can literally be delisted and kicked off of the market. Now, I don't say that as a fear, something to be scared of, although it is a concern. I say it because I see a lot of these stocks, when they get down to that red zone, for some reason it turns into a catalyst. It's like, I don't know how they do it, but the price starts to come back up because it needs to, it does. So you can normally catch a ride just getting back into the safe zone. Now, as I said, this is a drone company and they did have news today and we'll get to that. 
their description here is not them not them at all so we're going to get more information as we progress through this so what was the relative volume around the company holy cow what a jump they normally have about 900,000 shares they do a day. Today they did 41 million. So you know you got at least 41 times increase in share volume. The float, not here. Told you I had to go look for it. It is 75 million, roughly 75 million. So it's not a bad float, not as bad as 322 million, not as good as 7 million, somewhere in the middle. Financials. Is this company making any money? They are. This drone company is making money based out of America, if I hadn't said that yet. We got to take those three zeros, right, and put that behind there. So that is $9.7 million this American drone company made last year. They had to put out $5.5 million and got to keep $4.2 million. And look at that jump, folks. They went from $107,000 to $296,000 to 1.2 million to 9.7 million. Matter of fact, they have a news article out. We're not going to jump into it, but they also have a financial. So Matter jumping back to that financial that I got that New York Stock Exchange information off of. This came out just a couple months ago, March of this year. Looking at the financials, just a couple numbers tells you a lot of information. Total assets as of the end of March, $100 million. And their liabilities? Total liabilities were only $22 million. $100 million in assets, $22 million in liabilities. That's an excellent financial stat. Their revenues. At the end of this year's quarter for March, they did $3.8 million. Last year's quarter for March, they did $1.7. That is more than 100%, more than double the revenues this year. And tagging on to just a little bit of information down here, the company is actively engaged in designing and delivering best-in-class autonomous unmanned aerial systems. We know these as drones. They also work with sensors and software that solve important problems for customers in a wide range of industries. And they tell us here that last year they acquired three companies, 100% of them. They got MicaSense, Measure, and SenseFly. And SenseFly, I'm jumping over here to their website now. SenseFly gave them this drone right here. This is called the EB, the EBX for mapping, the EBGO, more mapping but different types, and EBAG that works with agriculture. None of these drones deliver parcels or carry anything except sensors, and they gather data for whatever it is that they're doing. And today's news is talking about these drones specifically. This came out today, June 21st. The company announces that the European Union Aviation Safety Agency, better known as ESA, has issued a design verification report establishing that the EBX SenseFly of Ag Eagle Company meets the ground risk class. It passes the safety inspection for flying over people's heads. They're actually going to allow them to do this. The EBX is the industry's first drone to receive a DVR, which is a designated verification report from ESA on the M2 mitigation, paving the way for European drone operators to seek approvals for their applicable national aviation authorities to use the EBX to fly beyond vision of line of sight. See, that's been the problem. You can use drones as long as you can see exactly where it's at. But outside of your view, no, we don't allow that. Over people's heads, over communities, no, we don't allow that. But they are gonna do it with this one. The ESA Design Verification Reports demonstrates that the EBX meets the highest possible quality and ground risk safety standards, and thanks to its lightweight design, effects of ground impact are reduced. It's super lightweight, you know, it's, it's more like a model plane than anything else, so if it hits the ground, it really isn't going to do a lot of damage. So it's passed, and this opens up the door for businesses in Europe to use this and this means that they're going to have first mover advantage. Their drone, it's not just drones generally speaking, it's their drone was the first drone to actually get this approval. So they're going to get all the business of any companies over there in Europe that need something like this for their agriculture or mountains or whatever it is they're mapping. This is the company they're going to come to, an American company. 
Let's go to that is the six month four hour chart for UAVS. We got a low here just this morning, I believe it was, of 57 cents. Five months ago, we had a high of $3.38, about six times as high. Now, if we go back one year, she's still falling downhill, but we have a high of $5.73. Now, that goes back a year. Go back a year and just a few more months, and the high was $17.67. Now, I don't know if we can count that as a legitimate high. What I mean by that is I think it's exaggerated. This is February of last year, 2021. This is the stimulus month, at least that's what I call it, when everybody got those checks from the government. Lots and lots of people ran to the markets and started investing. And lots of companies got exaggerated highs they should never have had. But they're there on the charts. It is history and it is part of the algorithm now. But there it sits, folks. All right, so let's come back down to that four hour, six month. She's been under the 200, trying to get above it a few times, including right now, a very serious punch. She hit a low bubble here after about a week of falling. I'm not sure why she fell after going sideways for so long. Hit her head on the 200 and dropped to her knees. Hit the low bubble, which I don't think is the catalyst, but I do believe it's a factor. Low bubble on top of news, or should I say news on top of the low bubble. And boom, she exploded. She took off 57 cents up here to a dollar six, a dollar seven. So almost 100% gains, but wow. What a fallback. Looks like she's sitting on the 50 on the four hour. Technicals were very strong, are still warm, but not as strong as they were. Let's look at that 20 day, one hour view. So she was just going sideways, bouncing off of the 200, really going nowhere. Had that unexplainable fall. I'm sure there's a reason, but there it is. And the big bounce. Volume. There's nothing here to talk about at all. I mean, I see a little smidge. There's just a little drop of it here and there. But today, boy, there was a lot of excitement around this. And I gotta tell you folks, when this stock was hot, there was a lot of people following it. Hasn't been a lot of news lately about this company. So maybe just having the news got people excited again. Looking at the one hour, her fall came down on the 50 day SMA on the four hour. She has landed on the 200 day on the one hour. And the technicals are falling hard right now. Five day, five minute. So she was slowly falling these last few days, which we've seen, right? That's what all those other charts showed us. And then today she had a, wow, wow. She took all those gains before the market. Look at that, folks. This started to jump at uh, 835 in the morning, hit its high at... Uh, Oh, 9.05. 9.05, folks. Now, this is on the New York Stock Exchange, or is it the American Exchange? Wait a minute. Could be the NASDAQ. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever market it's on, as long as it's not the OTC, you can trade this pre-market, after-market hours. You don't need any special qualifiers. There's nothing different you do. Just trade, folks. The only thing you must remember is when you put in your trade, change the part that says time, day trade. You want it day plus extension or good till cancel plus extension. Just any extension or it'll ignore your order. So if you'd have been around and seen this thing start running, you could have jumped into this and caught yourself a good gain. But boy, once that bell went off, there was just nothing else, was there? She fell right at the bell, fell down through her 20, went over to her 50, sliced through the 50, and the 50's been hanging on to her. Looks like she's waiting for the 200 as it's climbing to come up to her. Will she bounce? Well, I don't know, folks. She needs news. She just had news, and this isn't just a one piece of news. It is actually bigger than that because, as I said, this is going to open up doors for her over in Europe. How many countries are over in Europe, right? And how many of them could use drones? I don't know. We are a new millennium. We have new technology. We have new uses for this technology. And this is the first drone to ever be approved for doing what it's doing over in that country. So first mover advantage. I would think this should have more growth to it. But 
Do your own DD, study up on this company. I like these drone companies. This one is in America. There's another one I like in Canada. Uh, there's three or four drone companies right now, but each is doing their own thing. Each has got their own niche market. And this, this being the first mover advantage in Europe from an American company, I like that a lot. So I would keep my eye on her. It looks like she has found pretty much her safe place Looking for the middle here, about right there. She's falling well below her 50. I may be a wee bit high, but still, she's below that 50. So if she bounces off of this 200, I would expect her to get here. And if the followers for this drone company come back, we could see this start to run. It's possible, folks. Keep UAVS on your list. She has a lot of potential, a lot of new area that she's going to cover that nobody else is. Now, I wish I could show you stocks that were just always running, 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 catch a Momo play tomorrow morning because it's still running and it's not going to stop. I do show you a lot of stocks that have huge gains and then fall. But folks, that's what stocks do. They go up and down. And we're seeing preliminary bounces off of good news, off of deals, off of deals that are opening doors for them to make more money and to do more business in the future. And that is just the start of how a stock starts to grow. So the stocks I showed you today, yeah, they had some pullbacks, absolutely. But they definitely had some serious runs. These were stocks that had news today. And when the news came out, they took off. And then people took their gains. And that's what we should be doing, too, as day traders. There's lots of news out there, folks. Just scan it. Run over there, check the charts out, see what's going on. If you don't want to scan the news, then put up your scans on your trading platforms. Find a price, I go from double zero one to three dollars, and I just look for any stock that starts to rip it up on volume and go check it out, see what's going on. And you know what? Even if I can't find any information, if it's running, I can get in on that, make some money, and get out without knowing anything about the company. It can be just that easy. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're gonna grow. See ya. <laughs>